we are still with chapter 1 classification of reactors and qualitative description I might have described about 25 30 reactors up till now I'm still going to describe 10 or 15 more that will complete uh, chapter 1 which we'll do in one hour from now and then quickly we'll start with chapter 2 I think last time we covered critical impeller speed for gas dispersion and critical impeller speed for off bottom suspension correct I want uh, to introduce you different four or five types of reactors where there is a special requirement So, I think we have come up to this that is the uh, PG upon P for downflow impeller and upflow impeller. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. So, the uh, let me cover one requirement which is very common in industry is uh, in gas liquid reactions the gas phase solubility is very low like uh, oxidations, hydrogenations the solubility of hydrogen in uh, all the solvents of course in water it is very low but in other solvents also it is, it is low oxygen also is very low. So, very common gas liquid reactions the uh, solubility is low. Only reactions with carbon dioxide or, uh, um, uh, or, or uh, ammonia or ethylene oxide the solubility is high. Any reactions with methane Recently, I was involved with the Department of Energy USA in developing new biotechnological process. They have abundant methane now, the new source they have found in the form of shell gas and methane and introduce O biotechnologically to make methanol. And since the solubility is very small and if you want to keep the overall uh, capital cost under control the mass transfer coefficient required was 10 times the best known in the literature. So, the project title was to get mass transfer coefficient of the order of one second inverse that was the project title. It ran for three years last year was that is 2018 was the last year and we have been able to make get mass transfer coefficient of the order of one second inverse. Now, that process is economical. It will be now extended to carbon dioxide reactions with hydrogen to make practically anything methanol, ethanol with suitable catalyst. The point I am emphasizing is there are special requirements of the reactor design when the solubility is less. What happens let me tell you imagine a stirred tank reactor bring it in front of your eyes gas is introduced below the impeller and the job of impeller is known by now the impeller rotation or the power provided by the impeller it breaks the gas phase into bubbles and these bubbles are distributed throughout the liquid that is the job of impeller. So, after bubble introduction bubble formation bubble rise till it rises at the top breaks there and goes to gas phase unreacted gas during the travel of the bubble because of low solubility very little reaction happens. 
suppose bubble size is 1 cc right, when it is formed and it rises with some velocity some 25 centimeters per second and if height is 2 meters it will take 8 seconds to rise. Right. Typically we find the gas phase residence time by gas fraction in the reactor multiplied by total volume of the reactor or hold up of gas in terms of meter cube in the reactor divided by volumetric flow rate. So, it is of the order of 2 seconds, 4 seconds, 8 seconds, maybe 20 seconds, but this time is so short that bubble formation and its rise and coming up to the top and most of the gas if 1 ml is the volume of gas when bubble is formed. Uh, the when it comes to the top most of it is unreacted maybe 0.9 cc will be unreacted 0.8 cc is unreacted. So, whatever goes to gas space you imagine there is a certain pressure of reaction and for discussion purpose it is say 20 atmospheres all right. Now, you keep on uh, introducing gas at the inlet unreacted gas goes to the gas space it accumulates there and pressure rises right. slowly pressure rises and we get a pressure of 20 atmospheres eventually. Now, we do not want enhance any enhancement in the pressure. So, what happens is we need to stop the inlet gas and when the re reaction happens then only some hydrogen gets consumed pressure reduces and only that much gas you can you can introduce. So, before uh, mid 80s I have covered this, but my recollection is I have taught this last time to other class not to this class. Did I teach you gas inducing impellers, plunging jet reactors, sparge loop reactors, jet loop reactors, rotating biological contractors anything like that. <laughs> learning second time is also not a bad idea, but uh, so before mid 80s such methodology of carrying out reaction used to take long time 10 days, 15 days, 20 days right. So, what is really required the unreacted gas should be brought down into liquid, so that it is brought into action right. So, the simplest way as shown here I can draw myself, but let us see you understand with the help of this. This is the top gas liquid surface and put the impeller in the vicinity of the top surface. This impeller creates lot of waves and bubbles get entrapped and if this impeller creates downflow as well some bubbles are brought down they are entrained down all right. Otherwise, if it is a flow impeller it makes drops and drops go to the gas phase and interfacial area is provided in the, in the gas space in the form of drop gas interfacial area and both the impellers are called surface aerators. Since, they are located near the surface and they create gas in liquid dispersion or liquid in gas dispersion either they create drops and the spray is created in the gas space both of these are called surface aerators. So, for some time these surface aerators were popular. Uh, you can see if there is certain uh, uh, stirred tank volume, stirred tank height approximately 20 to 40 centimeters of the top region can be surface aerated. And the surface aerators are active when the liquid submergence the height of liquid is of that order 40, 50, but if the height is more which I will show you in the next slide then we see that gas liquid dispersion is present only in the top region whereas, bottom region is almost inactive, but this is superior to 
the earlier case when there was no dispersion at the top. So, th there is some recycle of the unreacted gas, the gas in gas space to make gas liquid dispersion. So, first modification for uh, sparingly soluble gases is surface aeration. Let me show you surface aeration some other form. So, here the impeller normally we keep somewhere here our second impeller here now impeller is almost at the top and it creates dispersion in the in the top region. So, total reactor is not used almost 70 percent 80 percent of the reactor is uh, not under dispersion. So, therefore, an alternative design imagine this alternative design which is called self inducing impeller. Are you able to understand the shaft this is the shaft of the impeller and here is the impeller and shaft is surrounded by a draft tube right and the draft tube ends on this side like a pump enclosure. Have you seen a pump open pump where there is a impeller and then there is a hood. So, the impeller is covered with hood and hood is supported by this uh, pipe vertical pipe and at the top there is an opening you can see opening and there is an annular region between the shaft and this open pipe and impeller is completely enclosed by, by a hood right. Now, suppose impeller why bubbles do not come down because there is a hydrostatic head. So, for a location like this the pressure here is H rho g plus top pressure. So, the bubbles cannot enter the liquid and flow in the direction of increasing pressure. So, therefore, there is a problem of recycle of gas. Now, when impeller rotates and it imparts kinetic energy all these uh, equipment we are considering under the category of kinetic energy when it imparts kinetic energy and all of you know Bernoulli's principle the pressure locally in the vicinity of the impeller it decreases. So, initially if the liquid level when impeller speed is 0, if liquid level inside will be the same as outside level. As the impeller rotates the level slowly goes down because the reduction in pressure slowly goes down touches the impeller and when it touches the impeller this opening is now capable of recycling the gas, gas enters this opening flows through the annular region goes to the impeller and now impeller is capable of breaking the gas and distributing. Have you understood? No? no. <laughs> now, uh, what is that we are trying to understand. Are I promised you ice cream no? last time or the other class. <laughs> uh, this is a good idea that class I will say I promised the other class. <laughs> it is your responsibility. You can take money, use CR. <laughs> now, you collect all CRs. Who is M. Kaminj? Raise your hand. Yeah. And then you know naturals here? Yeah. And double scoop. 
and double screw. Next time means tomorrow. Okay. So, you count the number and, uh, and make an arrangement. Let us understand, huh? let us understand. We know Bernoulli's principle, the sum of kinetic plus pressure plus potential is equal to constant. This uh, is very simple. Of course, there are normally losses, frictional losses, but without frictional losses, the Bernoulli's principle is the all the three forms of mechanical energy when they are added together, the summation remains constant. Right? Our job, what we desire is to bring the gas from gas space back to the dispersion, not only that, bring it down right up to the bottom. Then only the, there will be induction of gas and because of the natural rise, they will go to the top, break and go to the gas space. So, the internal circulation will create gas liquid dispersion and uh, since there is a large dispersion and interfacial area, the rate of reaction, overall rate of gas liquid reaction increases mainly because enhancement in the number of bubbles which happens because of the recycle of gas. So, what we are trying to understand how the recycle of gas happens. Is the question clear? Right. In the earlier case, what did we do? We just kept the impeller in the vicinity of the top surface, rotated the impeller, it created waves and the waves entrapped the bubbles and wherever there was downflow, the bubbles were getting entrained or surface aerated. In other words, the unreacted gas, there is one mechanism of surface aeration by which bubbles can come back to the liquid phase and increase the gas liquid dispersion. Is this clear? Yes? Yes is very feeble. Yes? Yeah. Now, let us see the other mechanism. Now, here there is an impeller. Impeller is covered by a hood. I think this word hood is making you difficult. Let me draw draw hood for you. So, here is a hollow pipe surrounding the shaft, then we have a hood. This is connected at the top, so that we have a single opening here in the gas space, comes here and this is the hood. Actually, I have redrawn what is there, so there is no question of understanding more. It is the same. Right? Now, if you take a plan view of this, plan view of this from the bottom, then how it will look like? This 
this particular part call it as di so this is di call this as do So these are two circles in the plan. In the elevation, there is a width. So this is a plate converted into circle. This is another plate converted into circle. And the plate height is here, some height, to which vanes are provided. Now, have you understood the, this hood? Right? There are two circular strips which are connected with the help of this. Now, imagine this that ID is here, then there is a cone, this is a cone which is connected to this circle, there is a cone which is eventually connected to the hollow pipe and connected at the top. Understood? Yes? yes? yes. So, the, uh, the mechanical design is understood. The mechanism of gas induction is yet to be understood. All right. Now, induction of gas from gas space back to the impeller or back to the bottom is not possible because we are ta uh, talking about the direction of pressure rise. Here the static pressure is increasing. It cannot happen. If the bubble has to come here from this place, the only way is create a low pressure region, which is less than this pressure, then only it will come down. Otherwise, there is no possibility. And that possibility is created by the impeller when impeller rotates, it imparts kinetic energy to the liquid and locally there is reduction in pressure. And reduction in pressure is simply by the Bernoulli's theorem. This reduction in pressure should happen in such a way that the local pressure is less than this pressure. Reduction is occurring, but reduction should happen up to that extent. And when that happens, and if there is a path to connect the gas space to the low pressure region, which is provided by the hood and the pipe with an opening, now it is created and the gas from the gas space enters the opening and comes up to the shaft. Now, to the shaft, now we are providing gas, it is capable of this, uh, breaking the gas into bubbles and the bubbles are thrown outside through these veins. So, they come out, the dispersion comes out, dispersion comes out in this manner and it rises of course and then you get gas liquid dispersion. Uh, right up to the impeller and little bit below, little bit below. Have you understood now? Yes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There. Good. But here you can see depending upon location of impeller, depending upon location of impeller, uh, there may be some region which is yet undispersed. Therefore, the possibility is locate the impeller fairly close to the bottom 
so that the induction also happens right at the bottom, correct now? The only difference is between these two, here the low pressure region to be created is proportional to liquid height above that point, right? Whereas in the second case, the impeller has to rotate, impeller has to rotate in such a way that the pressure reduction is over and above the H rho G. Now H rho G is high. Suppose I write the equation, when the induction will occur? The pi into diameter of impeller, pi into diameter of impeller into N is the tip speed. Correct, no? And how much is the hydrostatic head? It is H, H is from this place to this place. So, H into rho into G. So, if this is the tip speed, the kinetic energy per unit mass is half into V square or it is rho V square by 2 if we express it in terms of kinetic energy itself and here we have H rho G. So, if we equate it that is we need to increase the impeller speed in such a way that the pressure here has to come down then what will happen at the end? Rho cancels to H into G. So, critical speed is N is equal to square root of that divided by pi into D. Just check. Is it okay? So, this is the critical speed for the induction of gas. This will just bring, I mentioned to you earlier, but let me explain to you again, when impeller speed is 0 and everything is open, the liquid level inside is the same as outside level. And as the impeller rotates and it creates lower and lower pressure, the inside liquid level it comes down slowly and when this equation is satisfied the liquid level just touches the impeller. If you increase the speed further now the pressure in this region is less than this pressure and gas gets, gets introduced right? and self induction starts. But the self induction entirely depends upon since critical speed is now proportional to square root of height, as we increase the height, rate of induction goes down. So, on one side we get better dispersion, but the rate of recirculation is less. Therefore, the next modification is, you keep the self-inducing impeller at the top and introduce one more impeller in such a way that the job of this impeller is to distribute the bubbles which are induced by inducing impeller throughout the liquid. So, that the jobs now have been bifurcated, they are assigned properly, inducing impeller does the job of induction and dispersing impeller, it disperses the induced gas throughout the reactor. Typically, these gas liquid reactions are uh, three phase, that is there is a catalyst and catalyst suspension also has to happen. And I taught you last time that in the presence of gas, the ability of the impeller to suspend the gas goes down, mainly because of reduction in power consumption. Therefore, we specially design one more impeller at the bottom, the job of which is 
only suspension of solid particles. Right. So, th this equipment was developed by, uh, by research students in our laboratory and there is a, there is a story behind it. I tell this in all, all my lectures everywhere. Now, this science, science day is there and I am going to move in Sangli and Kolhapur districts and I may give about five, six lectures everywhere and story I am going to tell you, I will tell there as well in every lecture. Wherever I am called, I tell this story right? and listen to my story. This catalytic hydrogenation is required for a variety of cases. The simplest was, I do not uh, I don't know whether your generation has seen vegetable ghee. Vegetable ghee you have seen? Yeah. So, that is made by hydrogenation of any vegetable oil. Huh? Any hydrogenation of nitro to amino, benzene saturation, if you take para hydroxy cumin and hydrogenate the size, then you get a perfume. If you hydrogenate para hydroxy nitrobenzene, you get paracetamol. And there are many, many hydrogenation reactions and oxidation reactions are also plenty. So, in, in all these cases, such a development of self-inducing impeller, I told you prior to mid 80s, the time required for hydrogenation or oxidation or for all those where gas is sparingly soluble was of the order of 10 days and 20 days. And uh, the development in Switzerland and Germany, they could bring it down to 3 hours, 4 hours, 8 hours from 20 days. Correct. Obviously, our industrialists here they got attracted and uh, uh, requested me to go to Switzerland and try to buy such reactor, so that the productivity can enhance. I went there, saw the factory and asked for the price of 2 ton reactor and the price quoted was 10 crores of rupees. Did I tell you this story? No. Uh, so because I tell it again and again now. So <laughs> 10 crores. By the way, if the metal is weighed out of that 2 ton reactor, it is less than 15 lakh rupees. Right. And the price quoted was 10 crores. At that time, dollar was 10 rupees. So, 1 crore dollars, correct? Made it is. So, I came back obviously because uh, <laughs> came back because it is uneconomical whenever we put any industry, we take loan from the bank, we have to pay interest, there is a depreciation and uh, if we make any product on the basis of such high equipment cost, then it is not economical. The industrialist with whom I was working, he requested me to go back and said that let us bring only drawings and fabricate here because India has become very strong in fabrication. Went back and requested for drawings and company readily agreed to give the drawings, right. Price of the drawings 9 crore 70 lakhs. price of the metal is 15 lakhs and save in remaining 15 lakhs, whatever is possible. I have told you earlier, this is the condition in India for majority of technologies. I am telling you one story. The Rafael aeroplanes is a huge discussion and then there are various arguments, who is getting money and what are the terms and conditions. But nobody is bothering that we are not capable of making. 
there is no sentence in any newspaper that we are incapable. Right? What is the real problem? If Rafael company says that you give me any money, we are not going to supply, then what will happen to our defense? And think of anything in defense we are importing. Think of anything in refineries, think of anything in petrochemical industry, anything in fertilizer industry, even today we are importing, everything we are importing. Right? And see, we received freedom in 1947, are we really free? We are so much dependent. Now we, by major difficulty, we got permission from local people to install atomic power plants in Kokan area, Jaitapur, right? But the power plants we are importing. So if they say no, we have technology for uh, building atomic power plants, but we don't have uranium. So we ask for uranium, then these people say, please try to remember those who go to management and try to sit in air conditioned room and don't continue the job of technology development and innovations, this message is for those who want cozy, cozy job to do in the lifetime. So, in all these products, in all these products, petrochemicals, fertilizers, refineries and many, many other, you imagine anything and mobile you have, there is no Indian mobile, there is no Indian TV, there may be some small exception here and there, there is no Indian major software, there is no major Indian automobile some 10 percent, 5 percent here and there, some development is occurring. You can tell me there is a laser pointer, even stapler, stapler is Japanese, all of us are using staplers which are Japanese. Right? So it is an important message, are we free? Are we free as a country and what is that we are doing? Coming back to the self-inducing impeller, this was built 15 lakh rupees metal price, 15 lakh rupees extra cost and it was built in 30 lakh rupees by the students of ICT in 30 lakh rupees against 10 crores. So when the price is 10 lakh, nobody will import 30 lakhs and then one was established, two were established, up till now 150 hydrogenation, oxidation, wherever such sparingly soluble problem is there, these many reactors are established and there is no import. The Swiss people reduce the price from 10 crore to 5 crore, 5 crores to 2 crores, right? But 2 crores, the dollar price went to 50 rupees, so it is 4 lakh dollars, they reduced it from 1 crore dollars to 4 lakh dollars. If locally we are able to make in 30 lakh rupees, who is going to buy? Right? So my appeal to all of you is, see marriages are going to happen, don't worry about it. Everybody is going to get married. You will definitely get two bedroom, three bedroom, four bedroom flat, one car, two cars, children, everything is easy. You will get that. Imagine whether you can develop two technologies in lifetime and that is the culture of ICT. If you are going to graduate from ICT, then your lifetime, think original, think innovative and commit yourself for a good cause, but without any stress. What is my message to you? Remain smiling all the time. Then only smiling people can innovate. Those who, <laughs> those, who have <laughs> those who have complaints in life, this is my, po my popular sentence, those who have complaint in life, they can never innovate, they can never innovate.
gas industry. I can tell you another 10 stories like this. Ah, plenty stories, plenty innovations that have happened. But main message is, we as a country, as, as engineers, we have thousands of problems in the country and every problem is solvable. Every problem is solvable. Remember this, no problem is simple, but every problem is solvable. Correct? Okay. So what? You, you have seen uh, faculty house, 22 stories. You have seen your uh, hostel, 7 stories. Where from all the money came? I never requested government to give money. Every floor there is a name plate of industry. Right? They give. If they get benefited, all your furniture, Godres furniture, is on, is on the promise. What, what is the story behind it? The palm oil we import, the Godrej, as, as a family, they thought, why we should import? We should grow. So they purchased 1,000 hectares in Andhra and they, they grew palm trees. But when they extracted oil, it was deep red. And imported oil is not deep red, it is clean, clear, water white. So they, they approached ICT, I was director then, approached. After analysis, it showed that it contains beta carotenoid in the range of 50 to 100 ppm, which gives deep red color. When separated, that 50 to 100 ppm price, price of 100 ppm is more than the purified oil. The opportunity is only those who can see who smile. Right? We have a track record, our institution has track record. I promise that we will make the oil clean using adsorptive separation. But I want, I am building a hostel for 400 students, want 400 Godrich chairs tables, carts, and cupboards. They did not ask me when you are going to develop technologies. We got all that furniture. Right? How much is the power of innovation? I will not tell you more. I will not tell you more. Because the huge wealth is embedded in knowledge. I can, I can maybe if you get time, you write on the last page, how to generate huge wealth through science and technology, you <laughs> give us a lecture. I have already promised you, I am going to solve in the class the most complex problem in multiphase reactor design, that I have promised. I, I hope you have written on the last page and you are going to remind me. Right? So let us see whether you get time. I can show you opportunities where, uh, what is the biggest number in terms of money that you have heard of? I will stop here. I uh, will show you money, what kind of money is possible. Yeah? But only for those who are ready to innovate, those who have perseverance, those who have patience, and those who smile. Only those. <laughs> Only those can innovate. Huh? Only those can innovate. So go to the next reactor. This is called a jet loop reactor. Here what is done? The job is very simple. The unreacted gas has to be brought to the, to the liquid. So the liquid is pumped and it goes at the top through venturi. Sorry. Can you see Venturi here? And you have done experiments with Venturi meter and same principle as gas inducing at the throat 
the kinetic energy, the velocity increases because of reduced cross-section and increasing velocity means reduction in pressure and the gas enters inside and gas liquid dispersion is thrown with high kinetic energy and therefore, it penetrates up to certain distance, but below that you have clear liquid which is pumped and this type of reactor is also popular. The yet another is plunging jet reactor. You may be having everyday experience when you take a bath, uh, that is you open the tap in the bucket and when the jet enters at the location of entrance of the jet in the bucket which is filled with water, the bubbles go, bubbles are formed. So, this is called plunging jet reactor, this is also very popular in froth flotation machines. This is yet another reactor which is called rotating biological contactor. These are the discs. Imagine horizontal shaft to which the discs are attached with a spacing of not more than 10 mm. The gas is passed, it travels like this so that it is plug flow and the liquid is up to this level. When the discs rotate, when the disc comes out of the liquid, it retains some liquid in the form of a film and in the gas phase there is a gas liquid reaction. It again goes back into the liquid phase and this is called the rotating biological contact. It provides very good interfacial area, entirely depends upon how much spacing you have. Have you understood this design? Central shaft have you understood? Horizontal vessel with central shaft, have you understood only that much? Yeah. Then in the gas liquid, the liquid part is filled only up to here below the shaft and then there is a disc like this, though you see this disc there is a clearance, some clearance so that it can freely rotate and uh, this is also connected at some location. You imagine th that is there are three supports to the disc, otherwise there is opening. Right? So, all these discs rotate and when disc comes out of the liquid while rotating, it retains some liquid, some liquid film and there is a contact between liquid film. So, total interfacial area is whatever area of the disc is exposed to the gas divided by total volume of liquid is meter square per meter cube. And uh, you can you can find out interfacial area in pack columns and plate columns and bubble columns and stirred tanks. This also gives good comparable. One definite advantage is <coughs> the uh, power consumption uh, for such system is, is fairly low and you get good interfacial area. Now, the third class is uh, potential energy and you know this equipment. Uh, some of these are exhibited in our laboratory. The classical pack columns which are uh, the venturi which I showed you know in uh, jet loop reactor. Only, only venturi is also used as a reactor. That is here we had a big vessel and pump etcetera, but here when the reactions are very fast, particularly for the up pollution applications where sulfur dioxide and NOx are the polluting gases, they react very fast with alkali like calcium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. So, both are passed, no, the liquid is passed as a primary fluid and this polluting gas gets sucked at the, at the venturi throat and gas liquid reaction happens in the expansion zone. So, that is also a reactor. This is potential energy classical pack tower, we have a support plate for packings and then there are packings and there is a liquid distributor. So, the liquid distributor shown is very simple 
I think the liquid distributor design is very, very important. Uh, you see liquid distributors which are there in chemical engineering laboratory, or you see some renowned uh, catalogs of some renowned companies like Sulzer and try to understand. I have told you once that in stirred tank reactor, the shell and the motor and the mechanical seal, that costs 95 percent. Impeller costs 5 percent. But the performance of the equipment is controlled, 95 percent controlled by impeller. Similarly, in stirred tank, the, the pack column, the packings, the shell, everything is costs 90 percent. The distributors call 10 percent but the distributors control 95% of the performance. So, understanding the, <coughs> um, this pack column has been covered, I think, in, in class, loading and flooding and flooding calculations and finding the diameter. Is it covered in the class? Actual calculations were not done? Okay, let me find out. Okay. It is good that you have told me, this is very, very important. All these potential energy equipment, I think we must remember one thing that liquid flows down in the form of a film over the surface of the packings or the liquid fraction in the equipment is very small and most of the cross section is available for the gas flow and gas phase pressure drop is very low. So, there is nothing like ideal equipment that there is some equipment which has this good property, that good property, all the properties are good, there is nothing ideal and there is nothing, no ideal person also. Uh, there are many good qualities, there are, so we have to accept the persons, all the persons as they, as they are and all of them are very good, all of them are very good. I, I tell publicly that I like all my students, our students are very good, they need direction, now they need the direction of designing a pack column that is has come to me. So, I will teach, I will teach that part, right. So, the packings uh, you must have seen, there are rashig rings and uh, made up of glass or ceramic, then saddles, bull saddles, interlock saddles. Then, have you have seen this in the laboratory, metal pawl rings and IMTP, then uh, the structure packings, all right. So, here we pump the liquid at the top and as far as equipment is concerned, the liquid is available at a certain distance from the bottom and we call it as a potential energy equipment. No doubt that the, the pump has pumped the liquid at the top and pump has given the energy, but we always consider with respect to, imp, with respect to equipment, right. In pressure energy, the gas or liquid enters at the bottom against pressure. So, as far as equipment is concerned, energy is made available in the form of pressure energy. As far as impellers are concerned of all the types which I mentioned to you, this is the kinetic energy. And here is liquid is pumped and pressure drop in the gas is negligible. There is nothing like HROG, if at all it is HROG, rho is of gas and therefore pressure drop is very low. Practically no energy is supplied through gas, all the energy is supplied through liquid in the form of potential energy. So, this is a pack column. Then falling film evaporators, uh, imagine one one heat exchanger, the one pass on the tube side and one pass on the shell side. There is a liquid distributor at the top and all these vertical pipes, all these vertical pipes uh, for those, the distributor is designed in such a way that liquid flows like a film inside those pipes. Imagine one pipe, then you overflow the liquid and then it passes like a film. If there are 50 tubes, you cover, you, you have a plate on which there is some liquid pool and you protrude the tubes above the tube sheet in such a way 
that it overflows inside in the form of a film. Now these equipment are popular as reboilers. I'll tell you the problem of uh, reboiling. Distillation obviously you have studied, but in uh, reboiling there are many, many chemicals who, which are uh, thermally sensitive, right. And uh, for those cases we do distillation under vacuum. So, under vacuum is a good idea. Suppose the pressure at the top is 2 mmHg, pressure drop is 6 mmHg, at the top of the reboiler the pressure is 8 mmHg. And if we take kettle as a reboiler, then the in the kettle the pressure rises from gas space inside as, as per H rho G. So, if you have 1 meter height, below 1 meter height H rho G means 76 mm. So, though 8 mm is at the top, 76 mm in the pool and at the bottom it may be even 200 mm Hg. So, all the kettle type of reboilers which are connected directly at the bottom, these are not acceptable. So, we pump the liquid and the heat is transferred in the heat exchanger, the hot material either steam or the hot oil is passed through the shell side and most of the cross section on the tube side is occupied by gas, there is no pressure drop and falling films are. If we want the falling film, the, the velocity is low and therefore, it offers very low heat transfer coefficients of the order of 100 watts per meter square. Therefore, what is done, these are called agitated thin film evaporators. Again, this development has happened in, in here. So, uh, there is a big cylinder while liquid is flowing, the, flowing down in a laminar flow, there is an agitator and uh, the uh, gap between agitator and wall is very small. So, a thin film is continuously agitated and this way we increase the Reynolds number and heat transfer coefficient is enhanced from 5 to 10 times, right. And again pressure drop is low. So, there is a agitated thin film evaporator of another design, agitated thin film dryer. The only when we say dryer, no, you evaporate up to the extent that you introduce slurry at the top or concentrated solution, you evaporate most of the liquid and product coming out at the bottom is in the form of solids. That is the only difference, but the principle is the same. Trickle bed reactors, this is a very popular equipment in uh, petroleum industry, uh, hydro farming and cat cracking. So, here the catalyst is in the form of a fixed bed and gas and liquid both are introduced from the top. So, liquid flows in the form of a film down and gas also flows in, in the form. Counter current pack column is known to us, but this is co current downward and instead of Rashi Gering's interlock saddles etcetera, we have catalyst particles and these are called trickle beds. I think these are the potential energy equipment. I will take a break of 15 minutes and we will start with chapter 2. Right? This classification and I must have explained to you large number of reactors. I promised 30, but I must have explained to you more than that. Chapter 2 is determination of rate controlling step and estimation of overall rate of reaction. Okay?